This is how my first video essay begins. No longer restricted by the written word on a page or the frozen image on a computer screen, liberated to let images and a disembodied narration speak for me, I open on a letter. It seems perverse, doesn't it? No more perverse, though, than Fists in a Pocket itself, as kinetic a movie as I know, story told and themes explored, as much through physical gestures, photographic compositions, and especially elliptical cutting, as through actual plot developments. And yet, it too begins with this letter, read aloud. Ironic, because the characters in this movie are barbarians after a fashion. They write their lives with their bodies and motions, not with mind or pen. We are first introduced to Augusto, the elder brother, the sensible, normal one, trapped in a car with his fiancée, attempting to explain his family situation as the distorted reflection of a city building seems to further ensnare him in a Byzantine claustrophobic cage. Only after do we meet Julia. When Augusto picks her up in his car, we get a few close-ups of him, intercut with mediums hiding Julia in shadow. We assume it's through his eyes that we'll experience the dysfunctional family. Only after meeting Augusto and Julia are we introduced to Alessandro. In a distance, long shot, his back mostly toward the camera, no cutting. We won't even get a good look at his face until the dinner scene a few minutes later. For years, this struck me as an odd opening. Why spend so long with Augusto, whose personality is not only least typical of this bizarre cast, but least central to the story as it unfolds? Only on my most recent viewing did I realize that we must begin with Augusto, because, in a sense, he is the secret puppeteer throughout. Piantala! Impara a mangiare! But then this movie is full of secrets, startling images and juxtapositions which resonate aesthetically and psychologically, even as they seem to emerge unexpected from some other realm. The movie is fond of elliptical cutting and seemingly random gestures which set us on edge. Note here how we cut, without warning, within a scene, to random actions like Augusto removing a cat from the table. There are also hardly any establishing shots in the film, except when the characters visit the town. We often cut from one scene to the other without warning. See here how we leap immediately from Alessandro's bedroom to the tablecloth ripped off the kitchen table. And then this blurred rush across the frame. Only after a few seconds do we realize that Leone, the weak youngest brother, is having an epileptic fit. At the end of the scene, Julia will caress Leone tenderly, and then we cut from her hand to her face, grinning diabolically as she whispers to Augusto, teasing Alessandro. <laughs> We've leapt forward in time. Later on, that pesky cat from the kitchen will return in a transition which combines both these forms of cutting. Alessandro playfully tugs Julia to the ground, and then we cut to that cat, leaping through a hole in the wall and rushing over to the two figures collapsed on the floor. If it's only been a moment since that first shot, then nothing has happened. But if a lot of time has passed, the positioning of these siblings in one another's arms is alarmingly suggestive. When I first saw Fist in the Pocket, I didn't know what it was or how it would turn out. From its earliest scenes, there's an uneasiness to the restless, impatient energy on screen. We aren't sure if we're watching a tragedy or a black comedy, because what we see is often very funny. You're never quite certain where the film will go next, and this uncertainty puts you on the edge of your seat, allowing you to laugh, but simultaneously filling you with anxiety. And here comes my warning. If you haven't seen Fists in the Pocket yet, I'm happy I've lured you this far, but consider perhaps hitting the pause button. Matricidio preterintenzionale. Il figlio uccide la madre perché vuole costringerla a fare il bagno. Buono quello. Fist in the Pocket is a movie worth exploring without a guide. Because it's about characters who explore life without guides, who indeed hastily dispose of their guides and find themselves both lost and liberated.